a really good approach in the box on what they're going to do against this, this defensive squad. Take a look at some of those highlights from our first game. Danielle Watson came out with some fire in the first inning and did not stop through seven. Yeah, she kind of took a little bit to find her groove. You know, she was working a little bit more deep in the counts and you really want to come out attacking early in the circle. But nonetheless, she found her groove, 11 strikeouts on the day, super successful. And then Michaela Edenfield with a bomb in the first. Edenfield is on fire. She is unstoppable right now. Two for two on the day, two RBIs, solid. And now the Seminoles turn to Katherine Sandercock, the pitcher of the week after an unbelievable weekend down in Clearwater. What should the Noles expect out of her going up against another Power 5 foe? Kat Sandercock is highly competitive in the circle, somebody that is going to be a game changer in this program. She's a down ball pitcher, mixes in the rise and the change up a little bit, but she's really just matured over the duration of her career. 4-0 with a save in nearly 22 innings pitched and a combined no hitter against UCF last week. She will take on this Indiana lineup that picked up an 8-4 win over Hofstra earlier this afternoon. No doubt about it, Kat Sandercock is going to dominate the remainder of the season, really, but a USA national team member, somebody that's been just a mainstay in the program the last couple of years. So Stone's batting average tops on the team. Leading off, Cora Bassett, the Purdue transfer. Third game of the day on Joanne Graff Field. We could not ask for a better setting for softball. Temps up in the 80s all day in Tallahassee with the sun finally setting. Provides a different set of challenges. Right to first base and Mac Leonard records the outs on the second pitch. Indiana comes out swinging early on and from Cora Bassett, aggressive in the box, which I really like to see, but nonetheless, over at first base, you've got Mac Leonard just solid. How tough is it? fielding now with the shade coming in and the sun setting over the next hour. It's definitely better than it was 30 minutes ago. I mean, you see the shade has kind of set over first base at this point. Now the one getting the brunt of it is Dev at second base. Holding her right arm up to her eyes. Jason Radcliffe digs in. She hit a home run in her first inning at bat against the Pride. Cock ready to deal on the 0-1. And then a fourth strike. How tough is it? You know, going back to back in that 30 minute span or sitting around for two and a half hours, which do you prefer as we wait for the 0-2? Definitely prefer the back-to-back -back games. I mean, I'm one of those athletes that wanted to play light, if you will. So, like, chances are I was not eating much between games. Maybe just some goldfish and some light snacks, some gummies, whatever. Uh, but nonetheless, just kind of ready in that game mode. I think having a game break is a little tough just because you kind of cool off a bit, you're chilling, and then you got to get back into it. Swing and a miss down on strikes as Sander Cock quick, quickly gets back-to-back -back outs. Sander Cock pounding the zone so effectively early on here, and I expect nothing less. We're going to take a look at this pitch. She's just going to spin it so well on the inner part of the plate, and Radcliffe just can't get her barrel extended. Race Borsung. Sophomore swings on the first pitch. Right back in the home plate for Sander Cock, the field with two gone. Something that Kat does so well in the circle is her ability to command the zone on the inner part of the plate. When you have somebody throwing hard and on your hands, it's extremely difficult to get that barrel extended to get a solid piece on the ball. stays patient to even count at one and one. Indiana comes in at three and two on the young season. They did not play any games last weekend. 
Sharply hit down the left field line and foul. I don't know if you call it fresh legs from only playing those first four games two weekends ago or maybe kind of shake off some rust with yeah. four games in two days on this field. <laughs> it's definitely twofold, right? I mean, they're well rested, of course, whereas Florida State's definitely been going hard, you know, definitely the last several days most recently. But nonetheless, I think that having those innings under their belt is going to have proved to have been a benefit for them. We're down in South Florida at FAU. They split those four games. Now for four in Tallahassee. Popped up behind the dish, Edenfield there for the third and final outs. Sander Cock goes down in order, takes 10 pitches as we head to the bottom of the first. The Hoosiers hand the ball to Macy Montgomery in the circle to make her fourth start of the season. What do you expect out of her facing this? Very daunting for the state. Yeah, Macy's going to work the zone all the way around. She's got a really good pitch up in the zone in her rise ball, but she's also going to work down in chains, trying to keep these Florida State hitters off speed. The really big emphasis for Macy to find success today is going to be keeping the ball out of the heart of the plate. I think that last point is kind of obvious, right? You never want to throw the ball over the middle of the plate, but the thing is, if you've got a lot of speed, you can kind of get away with that a little bit more often, but when you're somebody that, or at least if you can mix speed, you can get it away with it. But nonetheless, if you are somebody that consistently pounds the zone in a consistent manner of, you know, the velocity and everything else, you're going to struggle. Janai Kerr leads off again for the Seminoles. And rips it down the first base side, foul. We take a look again at a very consistent starting lineup for the Seminoles. I know the motto is left to right, but it, is there anybody you're looking for to improve on what we just saw in the last seven innings? I think Kaylee Harding had a really good game the last game. She just was, was kind of overshadowed by Michaela Edenfield just because obviously the power, right? But nonetheless, Harding has been a very consistent hitter the last several games for the Florida State Seminoles. I mean, she's the one that had the walk-off against UCLA, so she has so much potential and another one that's so young. 2-2, Two -two, chop back to Montgomery. That's her time and throws to first. Let's get a look at the box, the defense trying to get off the rust from the intermission after picking up the win earlier today. Who stands out? Who are you excited to watch today? I'm exciting, excited to watch Grayson Radcliffe over at third base. Just somebody that coach has mentioned is a consistent person that the rest of the team can fall on. I mean, she's a hardcore leader, upperclassman, program changer, were her exact words. The heart and soul of this team, as Indiana loves to say. Mac Leonard digs in. The number two spot. I don't think we've talked enough about the transfer portal, and I know that Indiana is a squad that has benefited tremendously using the transfer portal, and I know so is Florida State using Mac Leonard right now in this two hole in a very, very, very good lineup. Somebody that's come in made an immediate change, but that transfer portal in total has really been a difference maker in our sport, both good and bad, I think, and to an extent. I mean, some of the transfers are really tough and almost like heartbreaking, and then some are extremely, extremely efficient. Just off there for Montgomery. You know, Leonard, you mentioned you excited to see assembly into the culture here at FSU, and also Cora Bassett making that rare in-conference transfer. Into right field and fumbled by Stone. Leonard safely into second, standing up on the single and advancing on the arrow. Mac Leonard gets a really solid piece of that ball, just absolutely turns on the pitch by Montgomery on the inner part of the plate, but we see Stone fumble it a little bit in right field, which allows Leonard to advance the good base running, the heads up base running as a squad that I know FSU takes so much pride in and just their ability to kind of capitalize on even small mistakes. What is it Coach I loves to say? Look, when you're on second, we're almost waving you oh, home absolutely. every time. We're going to send them. 
the amount of times I practiced base running and somebody that, you know, suffered from extreme injuries base running, I still loved it. It was my favorite part of practice because it was almost just that competitive nature of I'm going to push the defense. I don't care if I have, you know, one of the best center fielders in the game right now on my team. Like, I'm going to make her throw me out. It's those game-like situations as an athlete that you you love because you get to practice it every day and the tenacity behind your intent is, I mean, it's so intense. Harding moves into the three spot with Edenfield on deck. Let's see if Florida State can apply some pressure. Three, four punch on a very good team right now from Florida State, but your three hole hitter Harding, only a sophomore who follows her up, Michaela Edenfield, only a freshman. So much young talent right in the heart of the order. Montgomery dealing with the 3-0 counts. Can't find the zone. It's a four-pitch walk to Harding. To put two on in the bottom of the first. Next batter, number 51, Michaela Edenfield. We saw Florida State's hitters freeze up a little when they saw a lot of change-ups from Hofstra's starting unit today. So when you're seeing a lot of that same pitch again, how do you make the adjustment? Yeah, you just kind of make the mental mindset of, that's what I'm gonna sit. And those are the conversations that often happen in the dugout with Coach Wilson, especially over there is, hey coach, I'm gonna sit change up. I want you in my pocket so that when I take a fastball, it's not like AP, what are you doing, man? Swing the bat. It's like, oh no, I got you. I see what you're doing. And those are the conversations that so often are occurring throughout the game. Runners looking to advance. Leonard slides in safely to third. Harding over to second. That's what Florida State does well, is just capitalizing on the small miscues. It's something as simple as the ball that just gets right next to the catcher, just out of her glove. But that immediate recognition in aggressive but under control base running. Coach Stanton has talked about toughness in tight spots for her team. Good moment to settle things down. Back to square one is Coach Oz's team now 12 and 0 on this young season, one of just six remaining unbeaten in the sport. Yeah, and I think the claim to fame right now for Florida State is the strength of schedule early on, the amount of top five victories that they have, or um, you know, high-ranking teams, if you will, but nonetheless, just their competitive nature early on in the season. After the quick conference, Edenfield tips it back. Montgomery gets a much needed strike to stay ahead in the count. That approach by Edenfield is what you really want to see as somebody watching the game is you have your catcher behind the plate, Warwick, who calls time to go talk to Montgomery and probably tell her to settle down a little bit. Hey, don't make the moment bigger than it is. And here Edenfield is ready to just swing, right, the next pitch because the mentality and the, the talk is probably, hey, go right at her. And here I am. I'm ready to swing. Trying to build up the young sophomore. Fortuitous bounce. Almost rolling all the way back to home plate. Leonard has to stay put. Work doing her best behind the dish. Two runners in scoring position in the first for FSU. Edenfield takes inside to even the count. That's a good take by Edenfield. Really tight in the zone by Montgomery, a good solid pitch, but nonetheless, really good recognition out of the hand, trying not to force something because with runners on second and third right now, you don't want to hit a ball to the left side of the field. Chopper hit down the line. Coach Stanton bringing her team down here after they were at FAU a couple weeks ago. He lost some big time pieces for a 25 win team a year ago. 
but she's excited for the challenge in facing Florida State twice over the next two days. Absolutely. She mentioned, you know, the main word of grit and just guts and resilience and having the wherewithal to be able to go into these big moments and just be present and compete. I love that. She was asked to describe her team. She said, yeah. grit, you just want to take <laughs> yeah. on that mentality and look for somebody who won a ton of games over at Marshall before making the move to Indiana now in her fifth season. She has brought that culture and toughness. Edenfield, but she's been gritty and tough yeah, in she, the batter's box. <laughs> she continues to just come unglued on these pitches on the inner part of the plate. And what I really like to see is, well, one, Troy Cameron to keep his head over there as a third base coach, but nonetheless, Mac Leonard on third base taking a very slow and under controlled lead because the last thing she wants to do is get too far off the base on a ball that's hit sharply down the line. Already the ninth pitch. Towards short, the throw home in time to tag Leonard Harding. Dancing in between second and third, retreats back. Cool, calm, and collected. Benson with a timely throw home. Benson makes a really good play over at shortstop. We see Edenfield just gets this ball a little bit off the end of the bat, and Benson comes up, fields it cleanly, makes a beautiful throw home, which Mac Leonard is just out and can't really do much with that, although that's something that Florida State does often is what they call run a down angle, which means if the ball is anywhere on the ground, the runner on, you know, well, I should say runners on second and third are going, but that ball right in front of. Flaherty, see you later. Maybe we should just always talk during broadcast. I mean, maybe home runs will continually happen, but nonetheless, Devin Flaherty just comes unglued on that ball in the inner part of the plate. Took nine pitches to get Edenfield out. All it takes is one for Dev Flaherty to send one over the fence for her first home run this year. Dev Flaherty, not somebody with a ton of power, generally more of a base hit hitter, but just takes full advantage of a ball in the upward part of the plate. I mean, absolutely comes unglued and turns on it. That's what it's all about, right? You know, you have Edenfield right before just battling through to try to get a good pitch, and it doesn't come to her, but Devin Flaherty takes full advantage of the one that she gets. After a first pitch ball, Coach Stanton comes out of the dugout, bring in the entire infield, try and reset, because we saw it in the first game against Hofstra, right? It was a full count that nearly ended the inning. Harding gets the walk, next pitch, home run over left field, and it seems like a similar play where Indiana makes a great defensive play, but got to be on that next pitch, and sometimes that's the difference in a game. Yep, coach said that it's all about the now, you know, and I think that that's the biggest thing is what's going on right now, and what can I do in this very moment? And it's just staying present, it's playing for that one pitch, and it's being able to capitalize, and the capitalization is going to make all the difference in the world. Young team, Coach Stanton has called herself an encourager more often at the start of this season, saying, hey, this is a young group that may doubt themselves. So she has brought in all the woodworks and motivational ideas. Carol the second in the out recorded. But a three run home run enough as the Hoosiers get the third and final outs. Flaherty puts the Knowles up after one. Devin Flaherty keeping us on the edge of our seats as we head to the second inning and making one Alex Powers very proud <laughs> up in the broadcast. I know, I feel like a proud big sister up here. No, Dev Flaherty is awesome. Super, super talented athlete, super good teammate and a leader of this squad right now, but just somebody that kind of leads mostly through example, doesn't necessarily have the loudest voice on the team, but nonetheless exemplifies what it means to be a Florida State Seminole. Left and right, huh? Look to your left and your right, baby. That's what it's all about. It was so cool to hear Kaylee Harding after the walk-off against UCLA, talking with the great Holly Rowe and saying, that's what we do. We just have enough faith and trust and love in each other that someone in a spot is going to get us a win. And 
we have seen it now, 12 and 0, trying to get to 13 and 0 by the end of the night. It, it, been by committee almost every single game. Yeah, and that's the definition of a good team. It's not always going to be the same person. And if it can be somebody 1 through 21 or however many people are on that squad, that's the most important piece. Stone takes a first pitch strike. Deanna trying to climb back. This offense does have some power to them themselves. Scored eight runs. A lot of damage, almost run ruled Hofstra before the Pride hit a free run, free run, sixth inning. We touched on the transfer portal earlier, and Sarah Stone's another young athlete on this Indiana team that transferred in from Kentucky. So another immediate contributor that has been on this squad and, you know, coaches looking to really make a difference for this young team. Talked about Stone, drove in three runs with a double. So had a single that win over the Pride earlier today. But Catherine Sandercock, a different beast when you step in against her. Yeah, she's somebody that I think has grown, I mean, a tremendous amount just because I faced her a couple years ago uh, through the summer when she was playing with the junior national team with USA and I was playing in the pro league. We played them and, you know, I was like, this girl's going to be good. She's got potential. I can see she throws hard. She's got, you know, firmness in her pitches and she places the ball well. And nonetheless, I mean, right there, strikeout swinging on the inner part of the plate, and that is her bread and butter, the inner part, trying to jam hitters, and you've just got to really be ready for that as an opposing hitter. Let's take a look on this pitch. She's down in the zone, and that is what she's known for right there, just on the bottom part of the plate. Yeah, it's hard not to walk away and press from that 5-0 and weekend in Clearwater. Michaela Edenfield with the jaw-dropping home runs. Catherine Sandercock. She fields this grounder right back to her. 4-0 with a save in those five wins. Yeah, when you can sweep the conference awards, I mean, you're doing something right as a group. ACC Pitcher of the Week, Edenfield, the Athlete of the Week, and nonetheless, just a true testament as to what Florida State's doing as a whole. The NFCA National Pitcher of the Week. Came in late Wednesday in Florida State's win over Florida A&M. She pitched those final three innings. How about getting up there, Sid Sherrill on the hot corner. Two pitches for the final two outs. Easy money for Katherine Sandercock through two. Macy Montgomery back in the circle. Good to see her bounce back after giving up that three run shot with two outs. Just the second time this year she's actually trying to go past one inning pitch. This being her first start. How she settled down and try to get back to what she does best. Yeah, just figure out those pitches that are really working for her in the moment. I mean, she works all parts of the zone. She's got up, down, change going for her. So it really just kind of depends on the day and those pitches that are the most effective in that moment, right? Coach Stanton talks so heavily on the now. So it's really what am I doing the, my best right this minute? And that's what she's got to stick to. Presti, who came in late about an hour ago, Florida State's win over Hofstra, leads off the second. <laughs> Junior takes a strike. Good to see her get some more at bats and chances after she had her third hit of the year. And that's the beautiful thing about a versatile lineup is the ability to interchange people. So right now we see Edenfield kind of, you know, still able to take charge behind the plate, but now you've got Lopresti in the game as well in the DP spot with BK going down the first game as she was rounding third. And again, just so much versatility, so much that can be interchanged. And I think that the depth alone is another strength that the Seminoles have going for them. Nearly through the infield, Benson over to first. It was funny because 
yesterday talking with Coach John. Asking her, you know, is this an opportunity to work in more players for four games in these next two days? What'd you say? I said, well, <laughs> I feel like we have gotten yep. in and yep. uh, me being me going at the queen and being so disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> Had to backtrack and go, no, I mean, the <laughs> Presti maybe awesome. getting some starts or maybe, and she said, it, it's been a testament to that depth yep. of, look, even if players that could start on almost any other team in the country that buys in and knows, hey, their chance is coming, or I can be a good teammate. Way Kaser back to Benson and over to first with the routine out. And that's something that she has done so consistently throughout the reign of her being the head coach is, I mean, she is a master of defensive specialists, if you will, and people that come in late in the game that maybe aren't, you know, the most elite bat on the team, but they're very, very good in the field, and they'll come in to the outfield if we've got, you know, a runner in scoring position that's extremely important in the game, and that's something that she's always implemented into her lineup. Huffley on. For the Seminoles, she did not play in that first game. That's the other thing. You see a few of these girls being interchangeable really throughout the duration of the game. You've got Waycaser in left field who starts here and there. Um, she's getting some consistent starts right now, but you've got Muffley and Blankenship who are battling it out at shortstop. There's so much opportunity for all of these young athletes to kind of come in and become an everyday starter. Now we saw Blankenship step in at short. She made some good plays, was quick on her feet. Yeah, absolutely, and that's just what you want, right? You want young athletes to be exposed to these opportunities as soon as possible when it makes sense. Roughly ready to walk on over to first instead. Big strike call. Lewis Soul, our home plate umpire, keeps Muffley there for one more pitch. Muffley, Muffley had a good eye on that, just kind of patient in the box, not trying to force him too much. I thought that fourth pitch was a strike. I mean, you don't want to just automatically walk, right? But nonetheless, took the next ball very appropriately on the outer part of the plate and just over there at first now, ready to go. Top of the order now back up with Janai Kerr. Another one of those fresh in the starting lineup. <laughs> Through the infield into right. Buffley holds up at seconds. And Ole starting to threaten again up three zip. Next up, number 13, Nat. Leonard. Leonard looks on. Runners on first and second for the senior. Had that first hit for Florida State in the last inning. We see Montgomery working the outer part of the plate because as a hitter right now, especially as a left-handed hitter, I mean, it's a beautiful situation. One of my favorite to have been a part of. First and second, you're trying to get a ball in the inner part of the plate so that you can get around it, get something extended to the right side of the field and allow my runners to advance. So we're gonna see Montgomery probably pounding the outer part of the plate. So if I'm Mac Leonard, I'm either looking for something that's missed over the heart of the plate, or I'm looking to get my hands out and extended on something that I can hit hard. Now in that hitter's count, here's the 2-0. They get 3-0 is Montgomery. Trying to get that final out. Keep the deficit at three for the Hoosiers. High fly ball, hit to shallow left. Benson takes care of business for all three outs in the second. Four State strands two, but heads to the third, leading by three. The crowd watching on. Always a treat when Katherine Sandercock steps into the circle. 
Couldn't ask for a better environment for softball. Florida State back here at home after really drawing some brave reviews out of Clearwater and that national attention putting right on the shoulders of the Seminoles, but more importantly, their starts. Rightfully so. The Seminoles were dominant in Clearwater, and I think that we as fans and former alumni and everything else, like we are just not surprised by any means. We know what they work towards every single day, and there's so much potential in this squad. It's always busy around here, right? Especially with our Seminole productions. Women's basketball getting the job done in overtime as the race towards Greenboro, Greensboro, I should say, gets underway next week. And baseball back in action too after they swept James Madison last week. Just so much fun, but a busy time here as we go into March next week. All I've got to say is go Knowles. <laughs> Taylor Minnick, the freshman from Bloomington, the hometown kid, leads off the third. Hoosier still looking for the first base runner of the game. Santa Cock is to look through her six. for Minnick, and the count you do not want to see against this pitch. Definitely, and the way that Sandercock has such a bite on her pitches, I mean, they're going so aggressively down in the zone, and you see these hitters taking massive hacks, and really, you just want to be short to the ball, try to get your barrel right underneath it, and make contact. Just one foul towards the Seminole dugout. Sandercock expected again be the piece that leads Florida State back to Oklahoma City. That is a ways away from now. This team loves talking about being focused on the present. It's a long season, Sean. You can't get ahead of yourself. Got to stay in the moment. What we're hearing so often from all of these coaches as we kind of break down their team, break down the starts of their season, and just really not trying to get too far ahead of themselves because when you are coming off a hot season like Florida State did last year, it's so easy to look so far ahead and to the, you know, the foresight, and you've got to be just so in the moment and so humbled, right? So humbled by every single pitch. Zone. Big Bear goes after a pitch that may have been elevated. Big sweep and curveball, though, that had a lot of a lot of good movement. And just throws that ball past her. I think that was a high strike. Even had the swing not occurred, the 3-2 pitch way up and out, and the bases are loaded. That is a costly walk. When you're throwing 67 miles an hour, sometimes it's hard to hold up. You right. Identified as a strike and a late movement makes it a ball, but you're right. Costly walk here, unless she gets out of the jam. Carithers has reached on a base hit. That came in the first. And she also reached on a fielder's choice in the third. Kilponen could use a strikeout. Another ball in the dirt that Morgan Cummins really gobbled up going to her left. She looked like a hockey goalie. Yeah, I'm not quite that sure what that pitch is. I mean, she's just losing it. That's a curveball. She just That's a very difficult it. pickup by the catcher. How cool is this? Uh, we we'll go back to it. The patch on Cummings jersey. She's an SEC graduate. Look at this. So they get to wear this on their uniforms when they already have graduated. It's cool. Kilponen needs to find the strike zone. It's 2-0 and with the bases loaded. There's one in for a strike, and she needed it. Still work to be done with Middlebrook at third, Garcia at second, Bear on first. Two balls and a strike to Sidney Carithers. The low. Off the mark, and now it's three and one. Having trouble with that inside curveball, backdoor curve. 
I mean, just losing it. Carithers, a freshman catcher. Three balls and a strike in a 4-4 game. Check swing right back to the circle. The throw to the plate for one. Relay to first. Got her. In time. Double play. One, two, three on the put out. One pitch, a pair of outs. And out. Harding puts one into the air to right center. Good job tracking that down by Mitchell. It was cool talking with Coach Ah too, and trying to compare the teams that have gotten off to incredible starts under her tenure at Florida State. You know, her team, after winning the championship in 2018, rattled off 20-something straight victories in 2019. I said, well, how do you compare that to this? Because you lost so much talent. And she says, I can honestly say I didn't expect it but it's just the mindset of this team, and it is more impressive because they have answered that challenge of what team are we going to be after. They took plenty of hits at the start of that 2021 season and had to make some mid-season adjustments before going on that tear. Absolutely. Each season is its own, and it's almost uncomparable because there's just no way to compare apples to oranges and I feel like that's what we try to do so often but just knowing that every year is a new opportunity it's a new year you also can't assume just because you got there last year so just because the, the Seminoles had a fantastic season last year it's not a shoe in that they're there this year I mean it's a very harsh reality sometimes late into the season of Oof, we've got to get it together to get to where we want to be and so it's funny even asking her after UCLA saying how does that feel or how does winning against Florida A&M feel you say, you know, the highs can't be too high and the lows can't be too low. You just have to be consistent, yeah. just next game mentality. But that feels weird. And like you said, that Oklahoma City super regional environment down in Clearwater, is that tough to then come back here and settle into the non-conference schedule before ACC play ramps up. Definitely. You've got to ride the wave within reason, right? Because what you're striving for as an athlete especially is consistency. And I want to be a consistent contributor, and that's on my best day, and that's on my worst day. So if, if I'm riding the wave and I'm riding our victories too high and riding our failures or my failures too low, I don't know what I'm bringing to the table every day, and that's on me. So I've got to become better and more consistent and more even keeled. And so, like, earlier we even mentioned Danielle Watson and almost like her stone-cold face of who is she as a competitor, but I think she shows that every single time she steps into the circle. Pillar of consistency, Michaela Edenfield knocks that one back into herself. Yeah, she's consistently very good <laughs> right now. She's consistently very strong in the box. Coach I even saying, you know, for her being from Sneeds and coming here and going on a tear has been special. Stays patient and earns a walk to give the Seminoles a runner with a three-run lead. I mean, if I was her, you'd tell me who had all the power in her bat, but I just want to swing at everything if I had the capability of going yard every time. Yeah, right. I mean, I was never as strong as she is, but I think I led this the team or I don't know one year in walks myself and so I think having the ability to be a consistent hitter in the box is only a benefit to everyone around you except when you're unnecessarily walking and coach wants you to swing I remember that your T will would be like AP I don't need you to walk I need you to swing the bat so you can hit a double or maybe a home run <laughs> I was like okay got it Bev Flaherty puts one near center fields Mitchell covers her territory again throw to first off the mark, a good job by Warwick to back it up. Now that is number Edward 24, goes back to first. Talk about aggressive on the bases. <laughs> Edenfield might have been a little too presumptuous on that one, just a little excited, but nonetheless got back effectively. Just, you know, try to be smart, good, aggressive base running, but don't overdo it and don't make unnecessary outs. Sunglasses paying off for Mitchell. Grounder hit right back to Montgomery, fumbles it initially, but retires the side. A scoreless inning for Macy Montgomery. We'll have Coach off for you when we come back for the start of the fourth inning.
Top of the fourth inning in Tallahassee. Always excited to be joined by Florida State's head coach, Lonnie Alameda. Coach, playing the back half of a doubleheader today, your team just really exudes consistency. What do you like about the way they've started today? Yeah, I mean, uh, talk to them in between games, like, you know, just start to give a little energy to each other in the in the box and someone can get a big swing for us and, you know, kind of keep the pressure on too. You know, Indiana loves to run the bases, so I think Kat's doing a good job right now keeping them off of it, but, you know, Again, team at-bats, team defense, and team offense. Coach, uh, two big swings on the day. You just mentioned it earlier in the first game, Edenfield, most recently Flaherty in this game. What is the talk in the dugout on the offensive side? Yeah, I mean, definitely, like, game one, just making adjustments, right? Can we do adjustments within at-bats, batter to batter, inning to inning adjustments? That's what this game's about. And, you know, I mean, Dev, she's had some great at-bats this, you know, gosh, we're young season here a couple weekends in a row. But um, she's just been grinding it out and getting good swings. And whether she's earning a walk or a single up the middle or right there a home run, it's just so good to see because she's been putting the work in and believing in the process. And so it's heartwarming to see that for her. Appreciate the time as always. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach Jeff. All smiles so far this season and today in that dugout because you never know who's going to make that big play. For you. you never know when your day is going to come. On the field, off the field, it's a beautiful thing. And I love that's something. And Coach Stanton's move to Bloomington to try to implement of, hey, the sun's going to shine on all of us when we're out here. <laughs> And we just understand and know and implement some of that culture that's here at Florida State. It can be your moment any game. Shot through the infield in the left. Or, or excuse me, Indiana has its first runner thanks to Cora Bassett. Cora Bassett, the transfer in from Purdue, just a great addition overall. Just needs to compete on the field. That's what Coach Stanton said. She's got all the tools, just got to let her go and let her play the game that she knows so well, you know? And, and that's just the hard thing. I think we so often get over anxious and nervous and want so badly to succeed. But if we can just let loose and have that confidence, it's probably going to work in our favor. Radcliffe puts one in the air to left. Way Kaser gets underneath for the first outs. He's even going to mention it. Indiana has two upperclassmen starters today. You Su just saw them both yep. in the last two at bats. <laughs> Super young squad, but that's what you live for, you know. And it's just the ability of these youngins to come in and make a, like, be a game changer on the field, make a difference early on in their career. And I love to see it. So much opportunity, but so much growing up to do. But it's it's so fun. Coach Stan put the analogy of being a kid waking up for Christmas and unwrapping a gift. He said, we lose, what, seven starters from last year's team? You just don't know what you're going to expect. And we're excited for these players just to have this chance to get this experience, to team build a little, and we'll see where we go from there. But sometimes is it a little easier not playing with that much pressure because, you know, we just need to get our legs under ourselves before we can think about winning 25 games again. Absolutely, big absolutely. Like we said earlier, it's, it's all about the now and being where your feet are, being present in the moment and just not allowing the game to be bigger than what it is because it's exactly that. It's a game, it's a sport that we get to do that we work our whole lives at, you know, practicing and, and competing. And, and so often, I know I've said it before, but. I've had moments on the field that are legitimate like blackout moments. And so if we can just like hone in on what we know, we're gonna be putting ourselves in positions of general success because we're, we're present and we're in the moment. Your son tips it back. 0-2 oh, the count at the top of the fourth inning. Sander Conk was bruising those first three innings. She still is. I mean, one hit so far with these Indiana Hoosiers, but nonetheless still attacking the zone. 0-2 right now in the count, and just, I mean, relentless. Hit to short. They get the out at second over to first. 6-4-3 to end the top half of the fourth inning. The defense has been on point all day, Alex. And that is the beauty of wonderful defensive placement right there. We see Josie Muffley shaded up the middle wonderfully. Dev Flaherty turns it so, so quick. Beautiful job by the defense. Behind Kat Sandercock and Dev Flaherty, upperclassman, 
helping provide a three to nothing advantage now over Indiana. AC Montgomery still out there for the Hoosiers, gave up that three run shot. And even with the next batter, we saw the mound visits and she has settled down and even gotten into a little bit of trouble since, but has kept her composure. Yeah, no doubt. Montgomery's throwing a good game, but so far it's been one swing of the bat in each of today's games. Earlier against Hofstra, t tonight against Indiana. Nonetheless, one pitch can change the whole complexity of the game, but that's why we play it, and that's the beauty of having, having some power in your lineup. Lopresti over to Shorts. Benson with another put out quickly to start the fourth. Lepresti's second ground ball to shortstop of the day. And I know as a hitter, the one thing we're trying to tell ourselves the entire time throughout the game is make a different mistake. I don't want to ground out to the same place each time. I want to make adjustments. And that's what we just heard from Coach in the last half inning of it's all about making adjustments throughout the entire season. And that's what their focus is. Way Kaser at the plate. She puts that one foul. Trying to find her groove in the batter's box is been putting down some fly balls this afternoon. But I like what you said. This is the chance to go out there, not only show what you can do moving forward this season, but you have to get that experience. You have to watch those pitches and go up against another opponent for you to get better. Absolutely. And I think that sometimes, too, on the other side of that comment, as an athlete, Right on cue, Way Kaser. With a ball up the middle. A little speed on that and a big smile looking back at the dugout. Yeah, that ball had some zip on it for sure. Smoked right back up the middle. Super excited for Way Kaser. One of her first hits of the season, really. She's had several opportunities, but just trying to find her way. Nonetheless, a young contributor, really excited to see her find some success. Indiana does have the bullpen working. Looks like we may have a pinch runner for FSU as well. Both teams quickly conference. What do you say to Montgomery in a moment like this? Go at the hitter. Josie Muffley, nine hole hitter right now. Somebody that, you know, is again trying to find her way throughout the season isn't an everyday starter and knowing that as coach Stanton I'm probably telling her hey go right at her you know we've got the top of the order coming up go right at the hitter let's try to roll a double play if we can let your defense work behind you and just be yourself in the circle. Belvi as you see back on as a pinch runner. Muffley who is seven of nine hitting this year walked in her first appearance. Muffley with another rocket up the middle. Back to back singles for the Seminoles and they threaten once more. If I'm Josie Muffley, I am fired up. I'm eight for 10 on the season and just helping my team smoke this ball up the middle. Decent pitch by Montgomery, but definitely way too much on the wide of the plate. But nonetheless, Muffley takes full advantage on that, putting Janai Kerr in a great situation here. Number one hitter for Florida State. Kerr with a shot deep to center and off the wall. Here comes one run. Muffley holds up at third. It's an RBI double for Janai Kerr. Janai Kerr on fire. Seeing the ball really well today. Two for two so far. Single her first at bat. Just comes unglued on that last pitch right back up the middle. Let's take a look. She just sits on this ball so well. Something a little bit more up in the zone. Josie Muffley does a really good job on reading that ball off of the bat, gets off the base well, and easily makes her way to third base. Don't see that often here, don't you? No. Holding up at third? No, I know. Normally you push it, but hey, when you're in a good spot, you've only got one out, Mac Leonard up, let her work. Right now, runners on second and third, there's so many things that Mac Leonard could do right now in the box to allow her to be successful. Montgomery stays in. Florida State catching fire with three consecutive hits. And now Mac Leonard. Trying to keep her honest. 
I'm Warwick back there. I am being a little bit cautious knowing just how aggressively Florida State runs the bases. I don't want to make an unnecessary overthrow or anything like that. So just kind of relax a little bit back there. Let Montgomery do the work. What a dangerous throw this one. A little low. And back to Bassett covering second. Hitters count for Mac Leonard, 2-0. Now what do you look for here on a 3-0 pitch? I think that they're kind of unintentionally walking her right now, not necessarily to get to Kaylee Harding, just to allow the situation to make sense. You've got runners on second and third, a lefty up. It's a tough situation as a defense to be in, so I'm probably going to put her on first base. A good call there. It seemed more or less intentional to start. Leonard does not take the baits. Heads on to first, but I don't know if the reward is worth it, so to say. I know, right? Pick and choose your battles. And right now, the sole purpose of that is really playing the odds, playing the statistics side of the game and knowing that right now, if Harding has a hard ground ball to the left side of the field, they can make a double play. So it looks like Macy Montgomery's day is done. Gave up the three-run home run, an RBI double. Indiana trying to get out of some trouble here in the bottom of the fourth. We'll meet our new pitcher when we return. Macy Montgomery now watching as a spectator. Had some good composure, did well in some spots, but Florida State just so tough to handle for any opponents. And the ball goes to Kate Raber, junior from Omaha, will now make her third appearance of this season. Coach Stanton has said it is a young staff, but an excited one. What a spot to be put in on the road against the number three team in the country, trailing four to nothing. Harding takes ball one. Bailey Harding so mature in the spot against the Bruins in extra innings back on Sunday. Hard to see that much maturity in a sophomore when talking to Holly Rowe post game. Ground ball hit to third, dropped initially. All runners are safe. Muffley scores, and the lead is now 5-0. And now the Seminoles can smell blood in the water. And that's what they do, huh? The Knolls take advantage of situations that tend to work in their favor. They apply pressure on defenses and make them make them out, make, make the out. They just, they push situations that other people might not otherwise, you know, become accustomed to. And that's what they do every day in practice. Now Makeda, Michaela Edenfield steps in. A team high, five home runs. Coming off a two hit performance earlier this afternoon. Low for ball two. The Rayburg only made four appearances as a freshman in that short 2020 season. Came in once her sophomore year. In a big spot now. Edenfield with a drive to left. It's gone. A grand slam for the best freshman in America, Michaela Edenfield. Edenfield has so much power, and I don't think I could say it enough. Just her ability to allow the ball to get deep in a zone and just come absolutely unglued on pitches over the heart of the plate. Let's take a look at this one. Her load is so solid and something just a little bit up in the zone and she just takes full advantage. That ball's on the outer part of the plate, 
but she is just so strong that she hits that right into her wheelhouse on the left center part of the park. Watch your head, watch your cars when you're driving by Joanne Craftfield. Her second home run today, sixth of the season. Impressive strength for a freshman. It's so hard to say it because we saw her walk in the previous at bat. Such a phenomenal player. I know you said it. She has the tools to be very special here at Florida State. She has all the tools. She has the strength. She has the physical ability, obviously, and the power and what have you. But she also is extremely intelligent. She's intelligent on the field. You can tell. You can tell that there's a thought process going on behind her. Flaherty with a hard shot towards first. Good flip. And in time for the outs. But Bassett had contact with Flaherty, and she is down in foul territory. An incredible effort by Cora Bassett and Copeland. Flaherty hit that ball hard, and for Copeland to kind of come up, fumble it, and be able to have the wherewithal to toss it over to Bassett. That appears to be a good sign. I mean, you can tell me you tore your ACL twice. Is it just sometimes the shock of the moment, or what goes through your so. head when that play happens? Yeah, I think it's the shock, but it's also just the immediate impact of like, holy cow, like this is not normal. You know what I mean? And I think that sometimes the shock makes you more numb than anything. And it's almost just the reality of like, am I okay or am I not? <laughs> and you see smiles on her face. So you know she's okay. I think she might have been a little bit scared. As any player yeah. could be when somebody uh, collides yeah. with you at full speed. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. I remember after uh, my second ACL, the shock and the numbness that I experienced, I tried to get up and walk immediately and I fell again. But nonetheless, like it's just, you're almost like so confused. Like what just happened? Like I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm cool, I'm whatever. The player Coach Stanton has talked so highly of. Laura Bassett again coming from Purdue. But we liked what we saw from her competing against her in conference. But she just has that mentality and personality we're trying to foster in our culture here at Indiana. Trying to be a perennial threat after showing people what we can do in an all-conference schedule in 2021. That's probably, I can't speak from experiencing as I'm not a head coach, but that's probably one of the most difficult things coming into a program is really trying to define your culture and, and just the respect that your team is deserving of and what that looks like and how you're going to find it. And I think that that's what's so cool. You have these coaching staffs. I mean, Coach Stanton brought our entire staff over from Marshall, and it just says a lot about who they are as people and what they're looking to do at programs. And, you know, I know Kendall Fern well, just from experience from working camps and what have you. She's a great person. And then you have Shonda Bell, who was, you know, a, a highly successful player herself. And you just surround yourself with good people, and that's ultimately what you're trying to do is surround yourself and, and give these girls who are becoming women an opportunity to grow and learn from some of the best. Someone who racked up 560 wins at Marshall in 18 years. Ross, down the line to left. And foul. That's another freshman packs some pop too, huh? Yeah, no doubt. And I think the athleticism runs in her family. She's got a family full of Florida State Seminole alumni who are awesome athletes. I think her dad, right? It was her dad, yeah, played football here. And just a really good, good family of athletes. But Rayburg wins that battle. The Seminoles explode for six innings off of Edenfield's Grand Slam. They try to close it out as we head to the fifth. Well, it started with Kent Sander Kalk in the first, putting down the Hoosiers in order and he doesn't look back at all. No, Kat Sandercock is on fire. I mean, just attacking the zone so early in every at bat and the opposing hitters, and just so much poise in the circle, so much confidence as she should. And then Dev Flaherty with a bomb to right. 
Devin Flaherty really coming into her own right now. She's had really good swings on the season so far, and it's her first home run today, but nonetheless, so much power, so much potential. It has been all smiles all day for Florida State. Up and down the roster, as we would expect, contributors all over, and even Michaela Edenfield. I guess it's expected at this point, maybe. Undoubtedly. Winning is fun, playing a game is fun, and working your tail off with people that you care about is even more fun. A chance to close it out before looking forward to tomorrow's doubleheader. A lot more softball to come. <laughs> Hofstra and Indiana will battle at 11, and then we will be back in the broadcast booth at 1.30 for the Seminoles battling the Pride before that second game against the Hoosiers. Strong hit through the infield and all the way to the wall. Stone digs in for two and is standing up at second with a double. We'd now like to welcome in Danielle Watson in the dugout, joining us after an incredible complete game performance. How are you feeling? What's the difference of being in command in the circle and now just having fun in the dugout? Yeah, I think the best part about playing is just being with your teammates and being able to celebrate them. So, um, you know, just kind of pushed one out last um, last game. But I think this game is just so much fun, just watching everyone get their swing off, watching Kat do her thing. So um, love being in control in the circle. But I think just celebrating with everyone and celebrating their success is just, just as fun, if not better. Hi, Danielle. It's Alex. You are a lot more gentle on the mic than I thought you would be by after watching you in the circle. Really? That's yeah. a compliment. <laughs> so now, what are you looking for here? I know you had a career high 11 strikeouts against Hofstra. As you take in this moment, obviously learning from one of the best, I mean, what kind of tandem is this for you guys? What have you learned and what can you learn from Kat? Just so much. I think, you know, my role last year being the number three, just coming in, finishing her and Kat, her and Kaylin's games, and then obviously in the postseason, just mixing in with them. I think last season I just lived through every pitch that Kat threw and just was able to um, just follow and just do what she had shown, like, me and Kaylin to do. So I think that's been really crucial this year is just watching Kat and just as much as she's my teammate and I love her, just such a big fan of her and just how she goes about her business. So, yeah, I think just – um, I think we're just as much fans of each other as we are friends, so I think I learned so much from her, she learned so much from me, and I think that's what makes us such a good little duo. O2 pitch, just high for Sandra Cock. Danielle, what is your and Kat's relationship or talk in the dugout on the field? I mean, you just said that you guys are very much fans of one another, friends nonetheless. We have a shot right now of you guys with your arms around each other over in Clearwater. What does the talk look like throughout the duration of the game? Yeah, so I think we both just know that, like, I'm better with her, she's better with me, and just um, if I'm struggling, she's able to pick it up for me and just vice versa. And, um, you know, we're just so different as pitchers, so I think, you know, I start a game, she finishes, you know, the other way around. So um, we're just both just such big fans of each other, and, um, you know, we're all in for the team, which means being all in for each other, you know, whatever we're called upon to do that day. And I think we're both just doing a really good job of, you know, just being pitch by pitch and just supporting each other and, you know, the rest of the team just trying to keep the team in the dugout and letting people like Michaela and everyone else just get their swings off. And it's just been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Love to see it. Now four strikeouts for Sander Cock today as Florida State two outs away from advancing to 13-0 and on the season. Danielle, I think you know it's a rare thing to be perfect this deep into the season after the schedule you guys have played. I know you guys make adjustments all over, but how hard can it be to make adjustments when you continue winning? Yeah, I think just going in and watching film, and of course we're not perfect every game. Um, as much as great of a weekend as we had over the weekend, there were things that Kat and I and you know the offense, everyone can do better. So I think just taking everything that we've done well and just knowing that we do that well and um, just taking everything that maybe we're not as great at and just really working on that piece. I think that um, just kind of following our process, you know, we're never going to be perfect, but if we can stay processed and just stay in what we need to and not be so results based, I think that's what keeps us um, getting better at this point in the game, even though we're winning. Awesome. Danielle, I have one quick question. Yeah. Tell me quickly what the culture that Coach cultivates looks like with you guys as a pitching staff. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just all, everyone's in for every pitch. Whoever is on the mound that day, that's the number one pitcher. And I just think that that's so important. And, you know, like I said earlier, I'm always in Kat's hip pocket. She's in mine, Emma. You know, anyone who's out there, we're just always all in for what they're doing and just living through everyone else's pitches. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Danielle. Yeah, Good luck. Thank you. Xander Cock takes care of business just around the circle, the second out. Indiana, apart from a couple of runs here in the top of the fifth, will fall to three and three on the year. That's a really cool conversation to have with a player who's just coming off a career yeah. best performance. No doubt, no doubt. And I think it just speaks volumes too on the capabilities of what the sport is you know, demanding of so much attention and fans. I mean, we look around us right now, the, the stands are packed and Seminole Productions doing a great job being able to show, you know, obviously highlights, but really just every single game. And, and that's across the university. I'm so proud to be a Seminole and I'm so thankful for everything that is done for everything around us. A sport that can be so hard to win and then win consistently. Florida State, as you know, Alex has become one of those powers as the ACC tries to get a little more respect around the country. You see some solid squads these days between Duke and Clemson and Virginia Tech. Such powerful forces in the ACC right now with softball. Swing and a miss, 0-2 the count. The Knowles one strike away. All up to defect to try and extend this game as the pinch hitter. Got him for strike three. Back-to-back -back shutout wins for the Seminoles today over Hofstra in Indiana. It's been a good day to be a Seminole. Really solid performance by Kat Sandercock in the circle. Danielle Watson earlier today. Michaela Enfield, such a stud in the box. And last but not least, my girl Devin Flaherty coming through clutch early in the game with a home run in the first inning. Two home runs, that three run shot by Flaherty. The grand slam from Ed Enfield, enough to force the run rule after five. Incredible spots all around. The Seminoles moved to 13-0, like we said. Two wins shy of starting 15-0 for just the fourth time in school history. How cool is that to say? Yeah, Florida State's in a good spot, and I'm just really proud to see all the all the improvements that continue to happen game by game. And, you know, they just continue to make the adjustments that Coach talks about. And everybody's present. Everybody's mindful of what's going on around them and just not allowing the moments to become bigger than what they know. Team celebrating with their fans at Joanne Graff Field, a fun environment for this doubleheader. And even with the sun setting on day one of two in this unconquered invitational. Even more excited to run it back as our three teams will all play doubleheaders tomorrow, and then Indiana and Hofstra will actually play a third time on Sunday. It's gonna be a good weekend of softball, Sean. I feel like the Kylo Ren meme. Four. Four. <laughs> I know. Never enough, right? Never enough. Well, after 40 games and, what, four days in Clearwater, you know, it's a sport that has demanded the attention of eyeballs nationwide. Kat Sandercock gives up just two hits in five innings, strikes out five, including the final batter of this game. They're waiting to be joined our seminal of the game. It was Edenfield game one. We have a surprise for game two after a 9-0 win. Dominance in the box and in the circle for Florida State. Now just waiting on Dev Flaherty to put on the headset. Fun to chat with her. I know somebody you said is grown by leaps and bounds over her career. We now like to welcome in Dev. Take us through that at bat. What'd you see on the home run to right field? Yeah, I mean, we uh, scouted her a little bit. We knew she had a good changeup. Um, I was kind of just looking to get my swing off something hard. Had some runners on base, so uh, she kind of hung one, and I took a big swing, and you know, it ended up in a in a good result. 
Hey, Deb, it's Alex. You can smile on camera, hey, man. Alex. You look good. <laughs> How do you feel in the box? How do you feel the team's doing? What's the talk going on in the dugout? Give me some of the scoop. Yeah, I feel really good. Uh, made some big adjustments this year, I feel like, and I feel like that's all around. You know, you kind of see it one through 12 of us because we have a pretty deep bench, and I think it's really showing, not just me, it's just everyone. I think we have different confidence. You know, we're getting our swing off. Um, it's really fun. It's really fun to get challenged and kind of see how we can come out on top and what we can do better the next week. And I really like our offense right now, and I like the way we're going. What's the key to getting some similar results tomorrow in the doubleheader? Yeah, I think coming out a little bit um, harder the first game, uh, being a little bit more focused, trying to get our swing off on our pitch and really committing to that plan, it's going to be big for us. Um, I <laughs> um, so I think uh, those are some good adjustments we can make, and I'm really excited to see uh, how our team makes those adjustments um, to really give Hofstra and Indiana a good game tomorrow. All right, Devin, we're going to hold you to that, okay? We'll see you tomorrow at 1.30. Thank you, guys. Bye. Great job. Later. That's culture in full effect right there, yeah. huh? Your head coach <laughs> stepping in for the hug. What a day it was, Florida State with a couple of shutout wins over Hofstra and Indiana. This 9-0 win results in a...